It's me, Frank, with Rick Tech, And I'm here to talk to you about our new LC27 load cell for the Logitech pedals. This is our version three. Uh, the version three is uh, compatible with the G25, G27, G29, G920, and the new G923. So this one is compatible with all of them across all platforms, PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. Uh, it also has a, a softer feel, a little bit more travel than our version two. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install it. So a few tools that you're gonna need uh, is a couple of screwdrivers, uh, a number one Phillips and a number two Phillips, a couple of Allen wrenches, a 2.5 millimeter and a five millimeter. Uh, doesn't have to be these fancy ones, a simple L type will work. And then uh, to make your life a little bit easier, I recommend a cardboard box like this, something about uh, 12 inches or so wide or 300 millimeters, 320 millimeters wide. And uh, this is about six inches and about four inches deep. So uh, about 150 millimeters and about uh, 120 millimeters tall. And you'll see in a moment why we're gonna use this. So first thing we're gonna do is remove the pedal face. We're gonna do the pedal face uh, on the brake pedal, but if you're gonna be swapping around springs to put a stiffer spring into the clutch and a stiffer spring into the gas, go ahead and remove all three at this time. So take a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench and remove the two screws on the front of the pedal face. Keep the pedal face, the spacer block behind it, uh, the, the, the plastic piece behind it and the screws together um, as they vary a little bit from pedal to pedal. Next thing we're gonna do is take the cardboard box. We're gonna set it up like that and we're gonna flip the pedals upside down into it so that the box supports the pedal base, lets the pedals hang inside. Next, we're gonna take the number one Phillips screwdriver and there are 14 silver screws on the back cover, including one behind the carpet gripper. Uh, down in here, in the, in, tucked in behind it. Uh, remove all of those screws. We'll do that now. Next, we're gonna remove the 12 black screws that are on this back cover plate with the number two Phillips screwdriver. The screw heads on the two screws, the silver and the black, are slightly different sizes. Uh, if you use the correct screwdriver, you'll avoid stripping the heads. Once all the screws have been removed on the back cover, you can just grab and lift cover. Careful not to lose any of the screws. Remove them ahead of time if you can uh, and you can lift the cover away. The next step is going to be to lift out the brake pedal. So uh, at this point it's loose and it just lifts right out. Careful with the wire. Uh, it's clipped in in a few places. You can unclip it temporarily and once you have it out first thing we're going to do is remove the, uh, the ground screw that's on the side here. Take our number two Phillips and remove that screw. Next, we're gonna carefully remove the three wires off the potentiometer. Uh, go ahead and make a note of the positions if you want to uh, uninstall the load cell down the road. Uh, you can take a picture of it or just jot down some notes or even use a Sharpie to mark what color goes where uh, right on the pedal. And then gently pull off each one, careful not to tear the wires. And that will free the pedal. Now that we have the pedal out, we need to remove this bottom bolt here, this bottom pivot bolt on the uh, little strut mechanism. So we're gonna use our five millimeter Allen wrench on there. And if yours is tight, you may need a pair of pliers or a three eighths uh, or 10 millimeter uh, wrench to hold the nut on the other side and just remove that. Once that nut's been removed, you can slide this out and Take this apart and remove the spring and the uh, any other parts that are inside. D different models have different spring configurations to remove that. The, the G29 and the G920 have some white inserts uh, down in here and in here. You'll have to remove those in order to install the load cell properly. So uh, you, you may have to reach in with a pair of tweezers or needle nose pliers uh, and fish those out of there or just tap them on a table a few times, get them to, uh, to fall out. This part here is gonna get replaced by our load cell, so you won't be using this either. You can put that aside. And essentially this replaces that bottom section uh, down in here. And this is the spring assembly and bushing that uh, will replace the spring that was there originally. 
the spring assembly ships in the box uh, fully assembled, but if for some reason it came apart during shipping, uh, it's very simple. There's a spring, there's an orange rubber bushing inside. Uh, color may vary over time just depending on the manufacturer of the bushing. Uh, and there's two end caps that snap on, so those just pop on there by force. And you can just put that back together like so. And uh, the rubber bushing has a little nub on this side that will actually sit in. Uh, to keep it from floating around so that when it's uh, together, uh, everything is one unit. One end of it has this uh, three-spoke cut, and if you look inside this top section here, there is uh, three spokes that uh, will nestle into this. So rotate it around until it engages and falls in properly. Then the load cell goes on with this arch side facing out. There's a flat side and there's an arch side. The arch side uh, faces out and that is going to go just like that. So once it's together, we're going to take the pin and put it back in. It only goes in from one side. So you'll see that there's a larger hole on one side, there's a smaller hole on the other side. So you simply align the holes and push the pin through and install the nut back on the other side. And use the Allen wrench to tighten it back into place. Once it's tightened up, give it a test. Make sure that it works, that it's smooth, that there's nothing rubbing or grinding. And you'll only be able to push it a little bit with your hand, and then the rest will be up to 70 pounds with your foot. So uh, don't be concerned that you don't get a lot of travel on it. Once it's properly mounted to a rig and you're in the proper position and you use your leg pressure uh, to push it, it will go. Uh, if you weigh more than 70 pounds and you're able to climb stairs, you're definitely able to press 70 pounds on the pedal and that will travel. Once that's done, the circuit board should be pre-attached. Uh, we pre-attach it for testing and we typically leave it on. If it's not, or if you need to remove it for some reason, uh, you can press the release tabs on the top and the wire will come out. When you put them back in, just be sure the metal jaws that are in the terminal block are contacting the, uh, the tin copper wires on the end of this cable. Now that we have the load cell assembled in the pedal assembly, we're ready to drop it into the pedal base. First, we'll need to attach the ground wire to the side of it. So as before, we're gonna lay the pedal on its side in here. We're gonna grab the ring terminal that's on the ground wire and the screw that secured it. And we're gonna put that back onto the side of the pedal assembly. Once you have the ground wire connected, make sure the pedal still activates smoothly, that it didn't interfere with anything. And while the pedal is still on its side, we're gonna go ahead and take the original uh, Logitech wires and we're gonna connect them to the circuit board. The circuit board is labeled uh, red, white, and black, and we're gonna connect the appropriate wires to each terminal. So we're gonna take the red at the top, the white in the middle, and the black at the bottom. This is a good time to note if you purchase the optional uh, non-inverter board, which is to be used when the pedals are being plugged into a Thrustmaster wheelbase. Uh, this board will be modified. Uh, you will not be using the printed words. We will paint the colors uh, because this uh, uh, color order will change. So just be aware of that. It will be a different board. Uh, it will not have these components on here and it will have different color markings uh, for the wires. Now we can take our pedal and drop it back down into place. The circuit board attaches with double stick tape. It's pre-applied to the back. Just peel off the backing and stick it anywhere you'd like. Then you can take some zip ties and secure the wires so that everything is kept out of the way uh, of any moving parts. Once all that's done, uh, the wiring can be uh, engaged into the clips that are inside the housing that Logitech kindly provided for us. So we'll position all of that and that'll also help to keep wires out of the way. And the wire as it comes out, uh, you should have noticed when it was uh, disassembled that it kind of does a little S loop to keep the wire secure uh, in case you trip on the cable, etc. At this point, we're ready to take the cover and put it back on. If you were planning on swapping any springs around, would have been the time to do it uh, just before putting the cover back on. Uh, a good tip is to take the spring that was removed from the brake, uh, which is the heaviest spring, and put that into the clutch pedal. Uh, 
uh, and then take the clutch spring out, uh, which is heavier than the gas, and put that into the gas pedal, and that'll give you uh, a stiffer gas and clutch, uh, better matching the increased strength of the brake. So once we put the cover on, make sure that it fully seats. If it feels like anything is being pinched, open the cover up again and double check. In our case, everything fell in uh, smoothly, and we're gonna reinstall all the screws uh, in the reverse order that we removed them. Put in the 12 black screws first, and then put in all the 14 silver screws. So once all the screws are on, we can remove the pedal, take our box out of the way, and we're ready to put the pedal face right back on in the reverse order that it was removed. And there you have it. At this point, now plug your pedals back into your Logitech wheel, restart your Logitech wheel. It will need to recalibrate. Uh, once it's all powered up, you will have to uh, calibrate the pedals. And you'll uh, typically you do this every time you restart the wheel by pressing the pedals all the way down. Uh, so previously in the case of the pedals, uh, it was just a matter of stepping on them all the way. Uh, now because you have a load cell brake, you have to press on it with the maximum force so that the wheel and the game see uh, from the very beginning what the maximum force of the pedal is, what 100% braking is. Uh, that way when you're driving, your braking points aren't changing on you. Uh, that's about it. Uh, it's all done. Uh, product is available at brickmotech.com. It is the LC27 version 3. Uh, and if you have any questions on it, you can uh, chat with us through the website, send us an email, give us a call. Uh, we're here at our store Monday through Friday. Our tech support people are ready to answer any questions you may have. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching the video.